Yes, definitely. Thank you very much. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here to talk about this topic, which if it's, if it's not exactly in the mainstream of what the German Marshall Fund has done for the last 40 years, I think it should be uh, and is very much in the spirit of what we've been about. Uh, let me just make a couple of brief, very brief remarks from an American perspective, sort of around the question of why the United States should be interested in such a widening of the Atlantic debate in space. Um, I think there are a couple of things to be said here. I mean, the first is, and some of this has already come out from our discussion, that there are clearly a series of very kind of practical drivers of American interest uh, in the Atlantic looking south, including our own hemisphere. Uh, one that I think is very much worth mentioning in light of our recent elections is simply the changing demographics in the United States and a changing sense of what matters to the American public and American elites, business elites, political elites, um, Many, many Americans increasingly are looking south. They may be from the south. There's an issue of mobility here, but they're looking south in terms of their uh, interests. There is a big people-to-people uh, -people dimension here which is worth emphasizing. It's surely about Mexico, but it reaches much further south than that. I think, uh, some here may be able to correct me if I'm wrong, there are something like 10 flights a day from Brazil to Miami alone. I mean, this gives you a sense of, of the kind of physical connection that now exists, and I can only imagine this uh, getting stronger. What it means in a way is that the United States doesn't just have one international policy, it actually has multiple regional international policies. And from many key places around the United States, uh, the South, the South Atlantic, the Western Hemisphere is where it's at. Um, a couple of other things. Uh, I won't say anything about trade because we said a lot about that, but on energy, I would just underscore the fact that we're not only looking at a, you know, what people are describing as a shale gas revolution in the United States, but what is in fact actually an Atlantic energy revolution. I mean, already over 30% of world supply is coming from Atlantic sources. Uh, this is only going to grow uh, with certain things that could happen, including in Mexico, deregulation and so on. It could grow even more rapidly. Uh, this is going to make a big difference in terms of the way the United States sees the world, including places like the Middle East, which were not on our agenda today. Again, it's very Atlantic. Geopolitics and security. Uh, a lot could be said. Uh, one of the great virtues, I think, of the South Atlantic space, Southern Atlantic space, is it doesn't have the animating big existential conflicts that you find elsewhere in the world. But it doesn't mean that security issues are off the agenda. There are lots of them. Uh, lots of them between the United States and Mexico. I was in Mexico City last week, and many of our interlocutors uh, told us over and over again, yes, we have a problem with uh, violence in Mexico, but also be aware that 90% of the weapons that we seize in Mexico come from legal sales in the United States. So uh, it's a mobility agenda with Mexico, but it's also uh, a security agenda. And even Mali, even Mali, I mean, this reaches, the implications of this clearly reach to the Atlantic coast of Africa. Uh, there's a debate about the exact numbers, but uh, many specialists will now tell you that a, a, a very large percentage of the drugs trafficked into Europe now come across the South Atlantic uh, rather than directly. And this is having a, a very real effect on security in, the, in West Africa and the Sahel and North Africa. Second point I'd make is that a bit of this interest over the next decade is likely to come uh, from a desire to reinvigorate the Atlantic the transatlantic relationship itself. Um, there was a time, going back centuries, and this is pointed out very well in the paper that was uh, prepared for us, uh, that the, the South Atlantic was the center of gravity in the Atlantic. I mean, this hasn't been so for centuries. Uh, we could have a pivot, again, if I can use that term, uh, to something that is, if not exactly putting the center of gravity in the South, at least it's a rebalancing between North and South. What is the American interest here? Well, I think there's an intellectual and policy interest, first of all, in uh, big up and coming places. I mean, Brazil has been at the forefront of this debate. How do you engage Brazil? It's not so easy for the United States. It's not so easy for Europe. In fact, I think it's not so easy as part of the Brazilian debate to put this Atlantic piece at the center, but it could happen. And it might be one way of, of engaging with Brazil. Uh, Mexico. Um, Mexico is another very interesting case for this. Is it possible, and it's just an open question, to achieve something that is a little more strategic, a little bigger than just the border uh, engagement with Mexico for the United States, uh, if we put this Atlantic component into it and common interests in the Atlantic? 
Maybe. It's worth thinking about. Let me just make a final point, uh, even more global, uh, which is that um, we shouldn't forget about the rise of Asia in relation to this. First, for two reasons. First of all, uh, this anxiety about the rise of Asia is clearly driving a lot of the American and European interest in searching for something new in the transatlantic relationship. I do think there is a sense in which uh, a transatlantic relationship that is just operating on a Washington-Brussels axis, if I can put it that way, isn't firing on all of its cylinders. And something more would be useful, and that something more is likely to come from the two-thirds of the space that hasn't been part of the transatlantic relationship in the last decade. So I think there is that, there is that piece of it, the kind of broad gauge uh, notion about power and changing balances and so forth. But the other piece of it is simply that China and India and other actors are simply going to be doing more in the Atlantic. And we need to understand what that is together. Uh, some of it may be very beneficial, some of it less so. But we need to understand what that competition is, and I think it's going to be a shared trilateral interest between the United States, um, the Atlantic, well, South America, Latin America, uh, and Atlantic Africa with the United States and Europe in understanding this new geometry, especially about what China is going to do. So. Over the next decade, I think I'm actually quite optimistic that this is going to be more prominent in the American debate. No one is going to go out and label it as a, as a kind of a pivot to the South Atlantic, but I think a rebalancing probably is in the cards. Thank you.